Hey everybody, I'm artist Micah Gogan, and I'm here today with another episode of Art Source to talk about something that I get asked all the time, brush care. Let's talk today about specifically acrylic brushes and how to keep them clean and how to keep them usable. I'm going to show you some tips and methods and you can mix and match the combinations to find a system that works with your working style. And just to keep it fair, I'll be using a variety of brushes. So let's check it out. All right, so remembering that this video centers around cleaning acrylic brushes. So we'll do another video on oil and hopefully also watercolor brushes. But um, first off is to test when the brushes need to be cleaned. Now, I'm not one to clean them this way every single time I use them. It's just a periodic. Um, most times if I clean them efficiently with water, then there's no need to um, overdo it every single time. So the way that I clean in water, number one, is I usually use an oversized uh, water bucket because the more water I have, um, the less ratio of paint and water that's going to be there because a lot of times we are cleaning our brushes in dirty water and then we think they're clean and as the dirty water dries on it, it stiffens the brush. So first off is to make sure that there's an oversized um, container of water. Now, when I put the brush in, I wanna make sure that I'm just doing like a sweeping motion on the bottom, but also I will depress on the side to break up any sediment that's locked near the ferrule. Um, the ferrule is this metal piece that holds the bristles onto the wooden handle. So that's important when I'm cleaning the brushes, just with regular care during water. But what we're going to talk about is what happens when you don't clean them uh, regularly throughout. So we're going to take a look at that. So I'm going to pat this on this paper towel. And you can see from the uh, leftover residue that it's pretty clean. There's, there's not really an issue with it right now, or so we think. So I'm going to clean what I believe to be this already clean brush. Now, I take um, isopropyl alcohol, and the heavier the content, the stronger it is. There's 91 proof, but it could be 70 or, or whatever uh, percentage is fine. Uh, but I keep some in a little spray bottle because um, if it's not that crusty, then I really don't need to soak it, but I will talk about soaking it in a moment. This is just a piece of glass. This is what I use for my paint palettes, and I'm going to just spray a little pool of rubbing alcohol here on the glass. And then what I'm going to do is put my brush on it and depress both sides to work the rubbing alcohol into the bristles, kind of like I'm painting with the rubbing alcohol. And you can see that I keep flipping the brush like pancakes. I'm flipping it over and over just to see, you know, what's coming out of the brush. And so far, it's pretty good. I'm getting a little bit of dirty residue. Most of it was down by the ferrule. Um, but it is overall pretty clean and pretty good. Now you can also take the spray and spray the concentration on or near the ferrule and let it sit for a moment. Um, I will tell you that there's a glue that holds the bristles into uh, the ferrule, which is attached to the brush, and soaking it continuously. I made the mistake of doing that years ago, and I let them soak overnight, and all the bristles fell out because the alcohol dissolved the glue in the ferrule. But that was only because I let it soak in a container of alcohol like this, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, so, you know, no long-term sitting. <laughs> But you can see now I've got more in there and after I let it sit for a moment and I really push down on the part that's closest to the ferrule and you can see all this dirty residue that's coming out that I didn't really realize was there. And I'm rocking it back and forth and this is just helping to break up the sediment that's in there. Now acrylic paint is pigment and filler and so Acrylic brushes get crustier than like a watercolor brush per se because watercolor is just mainly made of pigment and binder. Um, but in acrylic paint, it is pigment and filler, which is, you know, in most times like a polymer bonder. And so that's what gets caked up in the bottom of the brush. Now look at how dirty it was after I applied the rubbing alcohol. You can see all the paint that was there. Now, I don't want to allow the um, rubbing alcohol to just stay stuck. And for anybody that's ever had their hair dyed or familiar with the hair dyeing process, it's kind of like 
when people get their hair bleached, you can't let the bleach just sit on the hair or it will overprocess it and cause it to crumble and break. So the same thing with this rubbing alcohol. I don't want to leave it in the brush because it's going to make the bristles um, more dry and more susceptible to breaking. You can already see, or maybe you can't see, but there's one small bristle here that's already been broken off. So that plays a part in it as well. But look at the... Um, I'm not certain if you can see it close up, but I can see the sediment that's coming up in little pieces on the brush just from the alcohol breaking it up. You see it looks like little specks on the brush, but that is the paint actually loosening up from the sediment. So I'm going to take my water and I'm going to rinse that rubbing alcohol out of the brush and I'm just going to depress and then I'll just repeat you know, and I can use the dirty residue. There's nothing wrong with that um, because it is rubbing alcohol. So even though it's tinted, it's not affecting it in a negative way because I'm going to keep rinsing it out. So I'm just going to swirl that around, working it back and forth. And again, the more I work it into the bristles, the more that it breaks up and massages. Um, so now that I've got that clean, even with the rubbing alcohol and it's leaving a clean residue, I use the the paper towel is a good key point to determine whether it is clean. And now that I've got all of the sediment out of it, or all the sediment that is coming out of it, then I want to then go back and condition the brush. And I'm going to use some Murphy's Oil Soap. It is 99% um, natural. So just like, again, uh, dyeing hair, when you... Um, dye hair or bleach it, it becomes brittle and so then you have to deep condition it. So that's what we're going to do for these brushes. So now I'm just going to put a little bit of this natural material on the brush, working it in just like I did the rubbing alcohol. And this is my deep conditioner. And again, I'm going to let it sit for a moment and it could be causing some more residue to come out, but that's just an extra cleaner, but I'm going to let it sit soaking into this and I'm just going to set it aside for a moment. Now, I'd like to clean a crusty er brush, and I'm going to pick one that was a little bit more damaged. So I have this flat, and I can't even get this to move. It's so straight and crusty. Chances are it had some kind of adhesive or Mod Podge or something like that on it, and it's all crustified now. So I have uh, two that are like that. So one, I'm gonna use the same technique and I'm gonna show you how to spray both sides. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start depressing it. And you can see immediately that the bristles give and it starts to flex. And the more that I just flip and just bap that on a regular basis, it's working that rubbing alcohol into all the bristles and breaking up that extra sediment, right? Now, another thing that I could do, if it's really hard and coarse, because I don't really want to break the bristles, I don't want to force them too much, but look at how much was actually in that. But now I'm getting much more flex with the bristles. Even though they're still kind of dirty, um, I'm getting at least some flexibility out of it. If I was going to paint, it would be workable and usable now. So I'm going to rinse it in my water cup here, and I'm going to just give myself a little bit of a go and now it's a little bit more usable right now I can also take some rubbing alcohol this is you know rubbing alcohol that's been soaked in so it's stained right but it's still usable and what I'm going to do is take the crusty brush and I'm going to set it in here now I told you before um, I left my first batch in here overnight and it did not work well to have that sitting overnight. So what I'm going to do is just leave it in here and I'm going to set a timer for three minutes and I'm just going to let that rubbing alcohol take action on the brush and break up that sediment while I finish cleaning some of these others, right? So I can just go through the process. I'm going to put this one that we just cleaned back through the rubbing alcohol process again continue to wipe it off. If it's dirty alcohol, it's going to come off dirty on the paper towel. So I have to keep rinsing the brush in water to determine whether it's clean and whether it's flexible. Then I'm going to rub it into my conditioner. And then again, I'm going to set that aside and then I'll rinse all of these at one time. Now, other um, things to take notice of is sometimes like this is 
um, nice and soft, but the edge here is a little crusty and the bristles are also starting to fly away. So um, I just want to get some of that part that is actually encrusted and I'm just going to spray directly on that. And you could just dip all of these. You don't really need a sprayer at all, but I think it's more effective. And then the key thing is flipping the brush back and forth. And these are good, you know, paint technique tactics too. So it really teaches you to be able to uh, manipulate the paint by flipping this back and forth because you can paint the same way. And I'm just going to work it back and forth to get it off of the brush. You can see that some of the dirty residue is coming out and I'm going to wipe that off and then I'm going to rinse out in my water. All right, and then I have my brush a little bit more um, flexible than it was before and I'll just repeat the process. Then I'm going to show you a trick also. When a brush is creating flyaways, or they have these little pieces that have started to come off and you think, oh no, my brush is, is damaged because it's got bedhead, brush bedhead. Well, what you can do is make sure that it is completely dry. I'm just gonna take a paper towel and absorb all the extra moisture out of here. And you can see that it's still kind of problematic on the side there. And you can just take some wax dental floss and I'm just basically gonna mummify the bristles. And what I do is start down at the ferrule and just hold the shape. And I'm just going to continue to wrap around. And I'm not pulling it tight because I still want it to maintain a flat shape. So I'm, I'm not pulling it tight. I'm just kind of binding together. And the wax coating on the dental floss will bind to itself. And I can just kind of press that down to adhere it. And I'm just going to leave that, and I could go all the way up depending on how bad the flyaway is. But I'm going to leave that and set it aside, and I'll come back to that as well. And it just kind of holds it back into shape. Now uh, I'm going to come to the part here that has the um, Murphy's Oil Soap in it, and I'm going to just clean that off with water. Okay, and now it's it's very soft and smooth. Uh, the bristles are clean, so now it's ready for action. And, you know, you can continue to monitor the area of the brush that's closest to the ferrule. That's the part that needs to stay clean the most often. And anything you can do to get in between those bristles and break up that sediment, you know, is just really helpful for cleaning your brushes. But you also have to be careful because if you damage the brush strape or the integrity, um, you know, of course you can bind it, but, you know, you know, you're limited with how many times you can do that without taking out the brush and uh, shape altogether. So what typically happens, this is a good example, this used to be a flat, but now it kind of looks like a, a, a squirrel brush or a blush brush. And that's because what happens is within the filament, all of that um, sediment gets down in there and it causes the brush to splurge out. So when we clean it, we dislodge the pieces that are in between all the filaments and it allows the brush to lay smoother the way it was originated. So I'm gonna clean this one to show you how we can kind of get it somewhat back to shape. Of course, you can't turn a sow's ear into a silk purse, but you know if you keep them in good shape throughout, then um, you won't have to rescue them quite as often. These are all student brushes that people used for one-time events, so they've been loved a lot, and they, they weren't always cleaned properly. All right, see how much material was still in that? And I'm just going to keep working it and wipe that residue off. And you see already it's it's become thinner just by getting that sediment out of there, right? So I can keep working and repeat the process. I'm not going to do it just for the length of this video, but you can see how if you can just get that puffy part out that's close to the ferrule, then you'll be in good shape. Now I'm going to take my stiff brush out that's been sitting in this rubbing alcohol for a moment. And you can see, even though it flexes, you can still see how crusty all those bristles are, so I really have to keep flipping it back and forth to really allow that to continue to work in. 
And I'm just gonna just alternate between dunking it in the water and dunking it back into the rubbing alcohol to alternate some of the cleaning process. You just really wanna allow it to get in there and break that up. And eventually I will get that back the same. And I'm just always wiping my dirty residue off on the paper towel first. Then I'm gonna rinse to get the rubbing alcohol out of it. Then I'm gonna dry to make sure that it's clean, and it is. And then I will condition. And then I will set aside until it's time to rinse the conditioner out. And that's the process. So um, if you keep your rubbing alcohol on hand, I would say, depending on how often you paint, maybe doing it once a month, um, otherwise just cleaning out with water. Um, you can also use the pink soap that they have. You can clean them every day if you like with that. Um, but again, I don't. I just use water and lots of water to make sure that um, the brush is clean. You can also get a texture mat. They have some at the dollar store that actually adhere to the bottom of your sink. But that way um, you can put it in your sink so that when the water is running over it, it helps to break the sediment up when you're running across it. Um, some of them have suction cups and they go in the bottom of your water containers and you can actually run it across so that when you're going back and forth, it'll break up the sediment for you. So whatever works for you, um, come up with your own magic recipe. But that is what I do to keep my brushes usable and kind of maintain the life of them as best I can. Conditioning the bristles after you strip them is really the most important key and don't leave the rest.